outgoing Wastingi Shu Governor Jackson Mandago remains one of my favorite politicians because of one momentous statement he made. Usweke siyasa kwa roho, weka kwa lungs. Simply put, it is never that serious. Do not invest too much of your emotions in politics, politicians, and political competition. Mandago was put on. He remained so months later. With the general election 67 days away, I would like to borrow Mandago's words. Yesterday, I was at Uhuru Gardens for the 59th Madaraka Day celebrations. It was President Uhuru Kenyatta's last national celebrations as head of state. Yesterday, he made no effort to recognize or to acknowledge his deputy, William Ruto. There are now obvious and open political divorce proceedings have hit fever pitch. Nine years ago, I was at Nyayo National Stadium for the Madaraka Day festivities. It was President Kenyatta's first national holiday as the country's fourth head of state. That time, the Uhuruto bromance was at its best, from matching ties to public display and voicing of affection, the Uhuruto duo was having great moments. Who would have imagined the slippery turn of events in their political relationship nine years later? Their supporters divided down the middle. And the most surprising thing is that Kenyatta's then arch rival, ODM leader Raila Odinga, is today his bosom buddy and preferred successor in the August 9th State House race. Imagine their supporters who harbored bitter feelings fueled by their political differences. What a waste of emotions. In a short three weeks, Waipa leader Kalonzo Musioka has endorsed Raila Odinga's presidential bid, left Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party, declared his presidential bid, dropped it, and rejoined Azimio La Umoja just three weeks. You can imagine the emotional turmoil and anxiety his supporters have undergone in those 17 to 21 days or about. What about Machako's governor, Dr. Alfred Mutua, who in the same period has campaigned for Odinga, taunted Musioka for his perceived indecision, and defected to Kenya Kwanzaa hours before the close of the political transfer season? Yet, today, he's one of the Kenya Kwanzaa principles, defending the same ideals and policies such as bottom-up economic model that he was demonizing not so long ago. The same principle applies to Kilifi Governor Amazon Kingi. In under a month, he has transitioned from an Odinga defender to a fierce critic. Good people, politicians change their positions so easily that I make one conclusion. It is not worth investing hard feelings or emotions in Kenyan politics. In fact, I submit that there is no greater waste of time and energy, and energy than investing your feelings and emotions on Kenyan politics and politicians. It always ends in premium tears, I tell you. I say so because the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, NCIC, was this week engaged in a ritual that takes place every five years in our country, mapping of the so-called hotspots as the country heads to the general election. Some of the counties listed include Mombasa, Nairobi, and Nakuru. I struggle to find the real reasons for classification of parts of this country as hotspots every five years. Sadly, I have ne never seen President Uhuru Kenyatta's home in Ishaweri, or Dipi Ruto's home in Sugoi, or Dinga's home in Bondo, or Musalia Mudavadi's Mululu, or Kalonzo Musioka's Seikuru homes declared hotspots. Yet, they have been at the heart of presidential elections in 2013, 2017, and even now in 2022. Shouldn't we have a more inclusive classification of hotspots driven by real Kenyan issues? What about mapping of hotspots for areas facing insecurity and require urgent government intervention? If hotspots classification and mapping was about the biting cost of living, then the whole, whole country would be marked a hotspot. What if we had mapping of hotspots for counties with deplorable health facilities, or even classification of hotspots for counties that are food insecure, or with poor quality education infrastructure? Put it this way, as we head to the general election, resist the temptation to begrudge your friend, your neighbor, your colleague, merely on account of political differences. After all, your problems are the same. 
political affiliations and persuasions notwithstanding. And as sure as day follows night, even the political protagonists on whose behalf you hold deeply feelings and emotions, once the polls are over in August, they will find a way of reuniting. Their differences are not personal. They are purely interest driv driven. If you doubt me, do you remember the handshakes, the national prayer breakfasts, the political hugs and embraces? Shauriako, that's my punchline. <laughs>